Among them is a Scottish physiologist named John Haldane. Haldane was a professor at Oxford. He wanted to study the effects of mining disasters on the miners who experienced them. Haldane checks to see if there have been similar incidents at other mines in Great Britain. As Professor Haldane continues his research, he uncovers a vital piece of information, a French study that identified a deadly compound that is odorless and colorless. To prove his hunch that carbon monoxide is killing miners, Haldane performs a series of blood tests and makes two key observations. So Haldane comes up with an unorthodox solution. Canaries. This straw hat is linked to a mysterious bout of mayhem that once held the nation's largest city in its grip. 51-year-old Jake Hoover, intent on making his fortune, Hoover takes the precaution of purchasing the land he is prospecting so he can have sole ownership of anything he finds. Hoover spends a year tirelessly panning for gold, but the results are disappointing. Then one day, his life takes an unexpected turn. The teacher shows Hoover some pretty blue pebbles she found in the box of soil he provided. Scavenging up enough glistening fragments to fill a cigar box, Hoover sends them off to be examined by a minerals expert. But then he receives an intriguing piece of mail. The letter was from Tiffany and Company in New York City. And these pretty blue pebbles are anything but worthless. The letter said that these are sapphires. And not just any sapphires, the finest quality sapphires that he had ever seen found in the United States. And Carol's pleased to see an old friend of theirs. Oh, look who it is. John Ernst, now a successful drug sales rep, had grown up in Petoskey, just a few miles from both Carol and the Kopenkowskis. He was, you know, kind of a cocky playboy guy. It's Carol who spends more time with John, and the small town starts talking. And next thing I know, here comes John walking through the front door. We all had a few cocktails. That's when I knew something was going on. Hey. Hey, how are you lovebirds doing? She'd say, Lyle, you want another drink? She'd make him a drink, but she'd make it so strong. After he'd had a few, he'd pass out right there in the chair, and then they would go off to the bedroom or upstairs. Supposedly, him and Lyle had a confrontation. What's the problem? Lyle finally had enough. He started questioning. John picked up a knife and then went after Lyle's neck. Lyle pushed the knife away, and then John ended up leaving. 